Hello everyone and welcome to the third lesson of the Teens Cornerstone Connections. This is brought to you by the, teen, the teens class of the Nairobi Central Seventh-day Adventist Church. And to, the title of today's lesson is Roads to the Soul. Our panelists include Ashley, Sid, and Salmon, and our wonderful teen teachers, Teacher Bridget and Teacher Jonan. And we're also going to be having some wonderful music from Amy. So I hope that you're all going to enjoy and that you feel at the feet of Jesus. Thank you. Happy, happy Sabbath. We are really glad to have you back here once again with us for our Cornerstone Connection lesson. Today we are going to study lesson three, which is entitled The Roads to the Soul. Now with me here, I have four panelists, and I'd like each one of them to introduce themselves, starting from my immediate right. My name is Sid, and I'll be taking you through into the story. My name is Salmon, and I'll be taking you through what do you think and out of the story. My name is Ashley, and I'll be taking you through the patriarchs and prophets and the flashlight. I am Jonan. I'll be guiding through the lesson. And my name is Bridget, and I'll also be among those participating today. So I'd like to invite Salmon to start us off with an opening prayer. 
Let's pray. Our kind and loving Father, thank you for being with us. Thank you for helping us to have a good week. Help us to study the lesson well. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. 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 So our lesson today, which as I've said earlier, is entitled Roads to the Soul. Now one thing that we usually say in this life is that the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Now, today we are going to learn what is the way to a human's soul. And so today's lesson, as we'll be studying, we'll, we're going to see how sin is, the nature of sin, and how seductive it is. And what are the consequences of sin? Not only during the times of the Israelites, but the consequences that it, had, it has even on us today. And it's a very, very touchy topic. I know we're going to touch on a couple of things that affect us in this day and age. And so I'd like um, us to get right into the lesson. Teacher Jonan. All right. Thank you so much, Teacher Bridget. So we'll uh, dive straight into the lesson. But before we get there, uh, I'd like us to turn our Bibles to the book of James. James chapter 4, verse 8 to 10. I'll just read it. James 4, verse 8 to 10, it says, Come close to God, and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Verse 9. Let there be tears for what you have done. Let there be sorrow and deep grief. Let there be sadness instead of laughter and gloom instead of joy. Verse 10. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up in honor. That's a very common verse we've been hearing ever since we were children, no? Come close to God and he'll come close to you. Humble yourself before God and he'll lift you up. Mm -hmm. Now, someone, take us through the what do you think section. We'll have further insight as to what those two verses talk about. What do you think? Okay, so on, what, on the what do you think part, we're supposed to rank some items according to what causes major destruction to our relationship with God. So first is the most destructive and five is the least. So the first one for me is media, movies, and music of worldly nature. On this day and age, movies are quite common. Uh, music artists visit schools all around and it's become more of the God we are worshiping. Because mm -hmm. God expects us to spend time alone with him, but most of the times you're watching a movie, you're listening to music. All right. And what do you think will be the least, um, the least cause of destruction to relationship with God? Which would you rank as a five out of the, those listed there? The example of key leaders who fall and are exposed to as hypocrites. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, I'd say that the media, movies, and music of a worldly nature in pure entertainment, apathy and boredom, the absence of good input, can be clustered into one because boredom leads to me looking for something to get me active or hyper. What would I do? I go to the media, watch movies, or listening to music, and then um, in pure ent entertainment, that's where it comes in. What genre of music, music do I listen to? What mm -hmm. movies do I watch? Mm -hmm. So this, because they engage the mind, first off, they shut down the mind. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you have stored information that you did not process. True. True. So you make, a you make decisions without processing mm -hmm. information. True. So because they're dealing with their mind and we worship God with our minds, mm -hmm. then now there's the nothing to worship God with. Yeah. Uh -huh. Bridget. Yeah, I mean, I have a testimony myself. When I was in high school, there was this pressure of reading Wattpad. I don't know if you guys have heard of Wattpad. Yeah. Wattpad used to be the in thing those days because you'd get easy access to books. And those books, to be honest, the content that was in them, um, it's not something that would glorify God. So you'd find yourself going to read because your friends are talking about a story and you're just floating, so you want to be part of them. And so I ended up being among the people who, you know, 
got addicted to Wattpad and it was so serious to the extent that, you know, I started realizing that even the time I spend reading the word of God is just dwindling. And even when I read the word of God, it just started becoming so boring. It's not as addictive because, you know, in what part it leaves you in one chapter and then you, you just want to read the next and the next. Yeah. And before you know it, you've been there finished for five the hours. You finished a whole book and you're like, oh, my God, I finished this book. And in chemistry, I can't even finish one topic in 40 minutes. So I think for me, it really took a lot of, you know, prayer and a lot of um, listening to the testimonies of others. Because, you know, even in our church community, we had in school, church community, we had people who had gone through similar circumstances. And, they, you know, they slowly helped us, you know, detoxify from all that. Mm -hmm. However, the effects of that still remain, unfortunately, because the brain is a very powerful tool. Yeah. 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 All right. Thanks, you, Bridget. And that begs the question. Do you think that all these media and all these things that take our attention away from the world, from God, they make us start getting numb to sin? Sid, what do you think? Does media and movies and music, does it make us start seeing sin as a good thing? I, I would say yes, because I don't, I don't know if a lot of you feel uh, this, but when you watch a movie, then you're like, oh, I wanna do this. This looks cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you, you know, you wanna be that guy. Mm -hmm. Even if they're doing the wrong thing. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. imitate them, mm -hmm. looking for maybe the popularity mm -hmm. or the joy that you think they have by doing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, it takes the you out of yourself, and mm -hmm. you now become another totally different person whom you're you not. True. True. Yeah. And uh, still on that, Sid, you can probably read for us the Did You Know section. You see what the Bible says about all these moral values that we get from other media and stuff. Sid? Did you know the Bible predicts warning moral values just before the coming of Christ? Perilous uh, or dangerous times, the dis dis disintegration of the family unit, lovers of money, lovers of, pre of pleasure, without self-control, are world, are world pictures describing life in the 21st century. Sure, thank you for that. So the Bible actually predicted how much, uh, before the coming of Christ, morality is going to you know, uh, deteriorate. People are going to start <coughs> seeing sin as a good thing. You know, we've lost all sense of consciousness, mm -hmm. all right? And uh, in our belief, number 22, of the Adventist Church, our uh, belief is Christian behavior. And uh, I'll just read it as it is, what it says. You know, we are called to be a godly people who think, feel, and act in harmony with biblical principles in all aspects of personal and social life. Now, as Adventists, uh, I tend to think we're like experts in double living. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. we have this personality when with other Adventists, another personality with other people when they know you. Mm. So it comes to a point where if your friends at school or at work meet with your friends at church and they start talking about you, they're like, "Are you sure we're talking about the same person?" Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> but in our beliefs, it actually calls for us to live a Christian behavior, mm. and it actually recognizes that we have different cultures. Mm. Let me just read that quote. This means that our amusement and entertainment should meet the highest standards of Christian taste and beauty. While recognizing cultural differences, our dress is to be simple, modest, and neat, befitting those whose true beauty does not consist of outward adornment, mm -hmm. but in the imperishable ornament of a gentle and quiet spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, there's always this excuse when someone does something in the world, you're like, you just understand them, they were brought up differently, they were different culture and all that. But by accepting Jesus Christ, you forsake your cultures. Right. You have all one culture now. That mm -hmm. is a Christian faith. Mm -hmm. So we need to act and walk and talk. And every single thing we do should be according to the Christian way of life. Amen. And even as we continue, um, today as we're studying about sin and its effects, the lesson actually compares sin to leprosy. 
Yeah, and they say that when you look at someone who has just acquired leprosy, it starts out very subtly. Yeah, maybe they just have headaches, maybe some dizziness. But as the months continue and progress, then now you start having some, you know, lumps on the skin, which will eventually erupt. And then they start having now eventually at the, 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 the severe most symptoms where now even you, you're not able to feel like you become numb you're not able to sense pain mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so you can easily injure yourself and at least the common symptom that we know is that you know they they like their fingers fall off and such things and that's it, it's just comparable to sin because sin starts out very subtly mm -hmm. just you know just one avenue was open the then sin just came in slowly it came in one thing then slowly by slowly we become numb to its effect mm -hmm. its effect sorry and then eventually we wonder how we got into that pit that mm -hmm. we dug ourselves into. Speaking of which, I was reading Ellen White in Pacheks and Prophets, um, I think chapter 41, and she says that, you know, by the time a Christian comes to the point of committing crime, it did not start that day. Yeah. True, true. It, yeah. The Christian slowly degenerated in thought and habit and mm. in mind to the point of committing that sin. And I just tried to think about it. Think about as a child, when you'd eat sugar in your mother's kitchen. <laughs> do, you, do you just wake up and then run to the kitchen and eat sugar? No. You start thinking about it. Yeah. You check if your siblings are playing. You check if your mother is around. You check if they were doing the dishes. Are the dishes clean? Um, how am I going to leave it the way I left it? And it's innocent. You're just a child. But for your mother to detect, maybe she'll see someone fetched it off the bowl or she'll see one or two crumbs left on the surface but she'll really need to look very carefully for her to see it how comes and you're just a child how comes do you know to see and to cover your traces yes yeah, true i mean um we've covered it a lot in the previous lessons as well you know the aspect where you just let a single seed of darkness grow in you it's mm -hmm. going to fester like leprosy as bridget has just explained and the symptoms are going to show up but by that time, it's already too, too late in most cases. Mm. Yeah. And, and that's why you realize that how God would deal with sin. If there was any sin that had been shown or sown within that community, he would quickly wipe them out for true. most of them. Although for others, there was still room for repentance. So it, yeah. True, true. And actually speaking of God wiping out sin in a whole community, the, into the story, uh, when going to the story, uh, you can, uh, for those with the lesson, the into the story section, and it comes from the book of Numbers, chapter 25, verse 1 to 18. I'll ask Salmon to just summarize for us what happens in this story today. Or you can just uh, read a bit of it into the story. Let us know what, what is happening here. I think it's Sid. Oh, who's it's Sid. Oh, yeah, Sid. <laughs> so in the story, it's the Israelites. Uh, so the Israelites were, while well, they were staying in uh, Shittim, the men began to indulge in sexual immorality with the Moabite women. So like they would, the women would invite them to sort of sacrifice to their gods, they would eat meals. And then like, uh, the, the, uh, the Lord's anger had burned against them. So the Lord told Moses, to take all the leaders of the people of uh, the of the Moabites and uh, and uh, kill them and expose them in broad daylight. Uh, the uh, an Israelite man brought into the camp a Midianite woman right before the eyes of Moses and the whole assembly of Israel while they were weeping at the entrance to the tent of meeting. Uh, when Phineas, the son of Elzea, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw this, he left the assembly. He took a spear in his hand and followed the Israelite into the tent. Then he killed both the man. He killed the man uh, and the, the the Midianite woman. The the God the Lord said to Moses, Phineas. The, uh, the, uh, the son of Elzea, the son of Aaron, the priest, has turned his anger away from the Israelites 
and since he was zealous for his honor among them as as I am I did not put an end to them in my zeal therefore I uh, therefore tell him I am making my covenant of peace with him he and his descendants will have a covenant of lasting priesthood because he was zealous for the honor of his God and made atonement for the Israelites. True, true. Thank you for that, Sid. Um, in this story, I, I have picked two different aspects here, right? The way Teacher Brigitte talked about the Lord can destroy a whole community because of sin. That is one. And then again, towards the end, we see the Lord making a covenant with Phineas and blessing his whole generation mm -hmm. through one person again, right? Now, still on that scene, Ashley, read for us James chapter 4, verse 4. James 4, 4 says, Adulterers and adulteresses, do you know that the friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever, whoever therefore, wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy with God. Hmm. What do you guys think about that? If you I want to become a friend of God, if you become a friend of the world, the Lord just distances himself from you. Yeah, so I did some research on entertainment. Mm -hmm. So entertainment can be grouped as what we saw from the what do you think section. Mm -hmm. All impurities. Really, entertainment is for something you do, like for leisure or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So entertainment, the word tain, mm -hmm. enter is quite clear. You are ent enter. Mm -hmm. Tain from some old Latin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm means slavery mm -hmm. okay. so you are entering slavery mm -hmm. so the devil is <laughs> he's really a uh, good yeah. cunning yeah he's cunning mm. so you think by watching a movie you're learning something mm -hmm. but then he's just befriending he's you slavery. putting you in slavery mm -hmm. so that you're away from god mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I think we should be very careful with what we watch. In essence, mm -hmm. we would say yeah. that as much as, yes, it's entering a yoke of bondage, mm -hmm. but um, it is pushing his agenda through media mm -hmm. because that's where we learn about dress, fashion, um, how to behave, and all these things we learn from. And recently I saw um, the game Subway Surface and I noticed that the LGBT colors are all over. And you'd wonder why I'd wake up one morning and I'll support them. But through the game I was playing or whatever it is I was You're doing. It. Yes. Ah. And so now it is in my it's brain. Yes. It is normal. Mm. Or rather comedy. And you see a man dressed in a dress and you think it's, it's funny, funny and you laugh. Mm. Tomorrow you'll see a man on the street walking with a headscarf and a dress and you'll find and you think it's, it's normal, normal yeah. because you've been seeing it all this mm -hmm. while so basically so. the devil is just trying to get us to rationalize sin mm -hmm. and if you remember uh, what happened so that the israelites fell into this sexual immorality in the previous chapters in numbers uh, in lesson two we talked about balaam Right, and how he lost on uh, the great riches he'd been prom promised by King Balak mm -hmm. because if he, he, he was, was unable, unable to cast the Israelites, he did not refuse, mm -hmm. he was unable to cast the Israelites. So, later on, what happened is Balaam went back to the king and he told him that we cannot cast the Israelites. But what I have realized is as long as the Israelites obey God and they're close to God, he's always going to support them. Mm -hmm. But what I can suggest we do is. Let us try and put the Israelites away from the Lord. That's how the Lord will separate himself from them and will be mm -hmm. able to conquer them. Mm -hmm. And so Balaam gave the idea that they should introduce this Midianite Moabite women into the Israelite camp. And that is what happened. Now, if the Israelite leaders had guarded the avenues of their minds, mm -hmm. do you think they would have fallen into this temptation? No. No. Yes, yeah, so... That is basically the main lesson we're picking from our, our lesson today. Like, we need to guard the avenues of our minds. And what are the avenues of our minds? Someone can name some of them. What are our the avenues eyes, to our hearts? Our, our eyes, eyes uh -huh. our ears. ears. Our ears, Sid. Our minds, basically. You're watching movies and stuff. Even what we eat. 
what we eat also yeah it actually affects a lot basically our five senses mm. you know they're made to help us live life a better life you know li- enjoy life to the fullest as god wanted it to be but the devil is using the same five senses to just bring sin into our bodies remember when we were kids these songs we used to sing oh be careful little feet where, where you go, go. Yeah. oh be careful little hands what, what you, you touch, touch. Mm-hmm. eyes what you, what see. you see ears what you hear mm-hmm. these are the same five senses god gave us the same senses the devil is using to just bring sin into our bodies and into our lives mm-hmm. and one thing i'm afraid of actually is that you know the devil has been at work for so many years mm-hmm. so he's quite experienced and because he's worked with so many human beings on this earth he knows each one's weak point so he knows maybe like for ashley for her it's food so for john and it's something else so it's 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 very scary to know that but at the same time we know that we have hope in Christ Jesus mm-hmm. because he's the one who can help us overcome and it reminds me of an incident that one of us was sharing just recently when we were discussing the lesson and they said that you know these days the devil even has avenues you're just looking through your phone and then pop an advertisement comes that you know you're like oh my god it's very embarrassing you're in church and oh my god what's happening so the devil has his very subtle ways of you know getting to us but as we've said we need to be very careful we need to have very high walls and guard all the avenues to our soul mm-hmm. true true thank for that um now moving on said you can read for us the key text our key text that is from first john chapter 2 verse f- oh correction sorry numbers 25 verse 10 to 12 it says the lord said to moses hinez the uh, hinez son of elzea the son of aaron the priest has turned my anger away from the israelites since he was as zealous for my honor among them as i am i did not put an end to them in my zeal therefore tell him i am making my covenant of peace with him mm, thank for that now still on that uh, we can read first john 2 verse 15 to 17 this is something i want to tie us to first john 2 verse 15 17 it says mm-hmm. do not love the world or anything in the world if anyone loves the world love for the father is not in them for everything in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life comes not from the father but from the world the world and its desires pass away but whoever does the will of god lives forever amen amen now this brings the point Phineas really loved God to the point that him seeing someone sinning outrightly in front of the people of God of the camp I mean people are crying and this guy is basically just sinning directly in front of them Phineas was so zealous of God mm-hmm. and then he just had to kill them both okay I'm not advocating for killing people doing wrong <laughs> but the aspect of zealousness mm-hmm. right there there've been so many characters in the bible who have shown zeal for God despite what other people around them were saying all right what were some of the characters you guys remember who have shown so much zeal for the lord despite any consequences or despite what other people around them are doing job job is one of them right i mean his family his wife himself tried to tempt him to cast god and die but he was like no i have to do the right thing thank for that another person Joshua remember when the Israelites had turned to other gods yeah. he said as for me and my house yeah. we will serve continue to serve the Lord true uh-huh one last person someone who was actually your age there's a Daniel. name of Daniel yes Daniel was in a foreign land where everyone is doing the wrong thing mm-hmm. including his fellow Israelites yeah who were told they are going to eat the king's food and they ate by him and his three other friends are like no we are not doing this that is a kind of zeal that uh John is calling for you know we should not love the world or the things of the world and that's why we're told again in James if we love the world we're drifting farther and farther away from God because the world does not do what God wants okay let us move on ashley the mm-hmm. flashlight the flashlight and i will read yet we have our work to do to resist temptation those who would not fall a prey to satan's devices must guard well, guard well the avenues of the soul they must avoid reading seeing or hearing that will which, 
that which will suggest impure thoughts. The mind should not be left to wonder at random upon every subject that the adversary of souls may suggest. And you know, she doesn't say that which will cause impure thoughts. She says that which will suggest. Suggest. It mm -hmm. is a suggestion. Mm -hmm. And the things we think about, what crosses our minds, is a choice. Mm -hmm. You can say, well, it just popped into my mind and I decided to talk about it. You decided. That's the thing. So, we should control Oh, the thoughts. train of yeah. thoughts mm -hmm. and choose what we want to think. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. Mm -hmm. Philippians um, 4 8. It's, uh, it's in the punchlines. You can mm -hmm. have Salmon read that for us. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Philippians 4.8. So I think from that, mm -hmm. there's a person who said, you don't drown by falling into a river. Mm -hmm. You drown by being submerged in the river. Mm -hmm. Temptations, are, temptations mm -hmm. do come. Yeah. But we, guard, we need to guard our minds. Mm -hmm. if, if you're watching movies, what do you expect? You expect a temptation. True, true. So when you're being tempted, you fall. You get mm -hmm. submerged into the temptation mm -hmm. and you sin. Because you invited it. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, something that just crosses my mind now is that we are not tempted for the things that are totally out of our way. Uh. We are tempted after our own lust. And, you know, I'll be sitting here and I'll not be tempted to start smoking. It's, it's a no-no, it can never happen. If you've not exposed yourself to it. Yes, so, mm -hmm. but I can be sitting here and I'll be tempted. It's on Sabbath. And there's a movie I was watching, a series, and this, it's coming out at 2. Mm -hmm. And I'm in church. Yeah. Where's my mind? It's already gone to the movies. It's coming out at 2. I mm -hmm. want to go home. But mm -hmm. where am I supposed to be? In church. Tempted after the things that I like. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. our stars, our idols, the people we follow, the people we want to be around, the people we wish to meet in real life, mm -hmm. those are our last, and that is what we are tempted after. Thank you for that. Now, it brings me a question, like I just ask. We have talked mostly about how um, media and entertainment and you know our leisure time mm -hmm. can mostly be spent doing the wrong things that the devil wants mm -hmm. but what are some of the right ways we can spend our leisure time what do you think are the ways we can replace some of these things with to Bridget and then you can get to uh, someone yeah um, even what we are doing now in and of itself is a good way of spending time with God mm -hmm. yeah so making friends who will encourage you to spend time with God, that you can speak about godly things, that is definitely a plus for a young person. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Salma? There are too many Ellen White books. <laughs> <laughs> there right. is no way. Mm. There is no way you can say, I have nothing to do, let me watch a movie. Mm -hmm. This book helped to build our minds. Mm -hmm. My dad recently has been on my back. I, there are books in the house you have not read. Mm -hmm. There are some books I was gifted after my baptism. Mm -hmm. Some I had not read since I was baptized in 2021. Mm -hmm. Some were in the house sitting in the shelf. shelf. Mm -hmm. I had not read. Mm -hmm. So my dad is very concerned. good at, he's mm -hmm. concerned because most of the time, mm -hmm. if he's not at work, if he's sitting in the house and not working, He's reading the Bible, he, he's sitting there, he's reading, and he's, he listens to worldwide so preachers, sermons. Yeah. So it's like, all you do is sit on your phone, you play. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, by the end of the week, he gave me patriarchs and prophets uh, and some books about health. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I am sure there is no way I can no say yeah. I, mm -hmm. I, I think opposed to entertainment, we should focus more on recreation. Mm -hmm. We can go swimming, we can go playing basketball, rugby, mm -hmm. and these things will use the energy 
that we would cause us to do things that are not right. Yes. We could create hobbies. You could build a bad house. You could paint. You could garden. You could um, landscape. You could mm. arrange flowers. Mm. There are so many things that God created that we can actually do other than just sit before a cinema. Mm. And there's a lot going on in the media industry that is not good. But the thing we need to understand is that God is the creator and mm. making us in his image. He makes man to love to create. We can flood the movie industry with godly things. We don't always have to depend on Hollywood and the other industries and blockbuster and all these things. We can create sources of recreation for Adventists who want something to watch and do not have anything to watch. And that way we would spread the message of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that, Ashley. And um, so the part, the, uh, part of the problem of uh, why we get tempted or why we fall into temptation is because we do not put our mind to work. All right. Common proverb, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. Yeah. Now, the devil, when he finds your mind is idle, he's going to try to fill it. All right. Mm. Nature abhors vacuum. Nature hates a vacuum. Any empty space in it's nature filled. has to be filled. filled yeah. Now, if your mind is empty and you're not filling it with godly stuff or you've not been filling it with godly stuff and the devil comes to it first, what is he going to do? Fill it with his stuff. He's fill it with his own it. things. And that's exactly why most people actually fall into temptation. It's mm. because you have not engaged your mind in godly things, to be specific. You can engage yourself in other things, yes, but the devil can find you there. But when you're engaged in godly stuff, draw close to God and it'll draw nearer to you. Right, that, that is what we get. Now, uh, May I make a comment? Yes, to Bridget. Um, just as you've said, um, it seems from even the start of this chapter of Numbers 25 that the Israelites had just gained victory over the people of Bashan. And so they were in such a good mood. They were just relaxed in a fertile land. And you know, they were like, okay, you know, then the Moabite women just started creeping in slowly. And now the point I want to make here is the fact that they thought the women should be the object of them falling into this idolatry. And you know, it, it's even something that happens in this day and age. You're advertising a car, there has to be a woman. You're advertising, I don't know, yeah. books, there has to be a woman. Mm -hmm. In the newspapers, it's a woman. And even if you look at the Bible, look at people like David, look at King Solomon. Mm -hmm. You know, um, women have been the downfall of a couple of people mm -hmm. in, the, in times past and even in this day and age. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we are told that it's the leaders who actually engaged in this immorality with these women. Mm -hmm. And if you read Proverbs chapter 5... Let's just get Proverbs chapter 5, verse, verse 3 and 4. King Solomon himself, who, was, who also fell prey to women, says this, For the lips of a strange woman drop as an honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil. Verse 4 says, But her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. And so it is calling us out. We need to be careful, and especially even to the men, right? Um, women can come and they can be the source of your downfall. Mm. But we need, as we have said, we need to guard the avenues of our hearts and, and trust that God will help us overcome. Amen, amen. And same, the same Solomon again tells us in Proverbs 4.23, you know, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Now, in the olden times, they thought, you know, they knew that the heart is what makes your decisions, but you know, it, it's the brain, right? Mm. So when they refer to the heart, they refer mostly to the emotional part of you, all right? Guard your emotions. Guard what goes into your mind. Your mind controls your whole body, what you see, what you smell, whatever single thing you do. Now, once your mind is guarded, everything, every part of you is guarded, and that is what we are called to do, all right? Um, we can just move on. John 3.16, this is a very common verse. John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that mm -hmm. he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish mm -hmm. but have everlasting life. Verse 17. <laughs> um, it's lost. Verse 17 says, yeah. For God sent not, not his, his son, son into the, the world, world to condemn the, the world, world but, but that, that the world, world through him might be saved. True, true. Amen for that. 
and that is actually I think one of the most important verses in the Bible and it portrays the whole plan of salvation mm -hmm. into that one phrase. Mm -hmm. Now Ellen White says in Patrick's and Prophets page 460 the heart must be renewed by divine grace yeah. or it will be in vain to seek for purity of life. Mm. He who attempts to build up a noble virtuous character independent of the grace of Christ is building his house upon, upon the, the shifting, shifting sand. sand. Nothing can strengthen our relationship with God than understanding his plan for our divine, his divine love and mercy mm -hmm. for us. And that was shown through Jesus Christ, giving himself up to die for our sins in Calvary. The moment we understand the pain that God felt in giving up his son, the pain Christ felt when he was dying on that cross, the effort it took to just offer himself up to take up every single burden that we are going to face right now. The moment we just understand the toll of sin on our lives, it's going to be very hard for us to fall into it again. Mm. And it's God's grace that saves us. Yeah. We learned in the, in the, previous, ver in the pre previous lessons again. Mm. We're not saved by works. Mm -hmm. It's grace. The grace of God covers all our sins now if we try to do all these good things independent of christ it becomes harder for us mm. that's that's what illinois says it's like building a house on sand mm. but by relying on god all these temptations that face us every single day in our lives they're going to be easy to conquer in fact there's a verse in james that says that god will keep us from falling and first peter 1 5 says that we are kept by the power of god through faith you know, we think that because we are in the church, we will not fall, or that we are holy, or that we walk according to the statutes. Here in um, 1 Corinthians 10, 11 to 12 says, Let him that thinketh he stands take heed lest he falls. It's also impossible that the slave of passion will be able to realize the sacred obligation each of us has to the love of God. If we are slaves to our passion and we do that which we incline to alone, mm -hmm. we will never realize the obligation we have to the love of God. True. Yeah, true. so mm -hmm. we choose our passions. And if we become a slave to it, look at it this way. Mm -hmm. If you watched a Netflix show the entire Sabbath night mm -hmm. and you come to church, are you able to listen? Really. You're sleepy. Yeah. Even if you're not sleepy, your mind is still, your mind is still there. Mm. You're thinking about, you know, that part, you're still replaying it and all that stuff. It happens to me, it happens to so many people. Mm -hmm. And we are slaves to our passion because, well, I wanted to watch that season and it's Friday and I didn't have time during the week. So I just have to do it tonight because tomorrow I'll be in church and then I'll come back home and sleep early. Mm -hmm. You know, because, and, and, and because now I'm a slave to my passion, mm -hmm. I forget that it is Sabbath. True, true. You disregard the laws of God. Yeah, so. Mm. All right. Uh, as we almost come into a close, further insight, I'd like Sid. We haven't heard you for a bit. Uh, read for us the further insight. And we'll get the closing comments. So now it is by leading the followers of Christ to associate with the ungodly and unite in the amusement that Satan is most successful in alluring them into sin. We cannot be too decided in shunning the company of those who exert an influence to draw us away from God. Mm. That is basically bad company corrupts good, corrupts good morals. Mm -hmm. yeah. The devil, when he says he cannot tempt you by your own self, he's going to lead you to people who do not do godly things. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, closing comments now as we finish. So as we close, I'd like to remind you that God has created us in a hierarchy. It's the mind, then the heart, then the appetites. And similarly, we ought to use them in that order. So you, you think first with your mind and then everything else follows. So in closing, Psalm 119, verse 9 to 11, it's a common verse that um, we, we usually read. And I'll just read it in your hearing. Psalms 119, verse 9 to 11. And it says, 
wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? And the answer given is, by taking heed thereto according to thy word. Verse 10, with my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. And finally, verse 11, thy word have, have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And so we're given one of the strongest fortitudes for us to guard our hearts. And even as Salmon told us, you need to have read from the start of the Bible to the end. And there are so many Ellen G. White books. Read all that rather than spending your time in things that will not help you. Yeah. And with that, I think I would like to invite um, Ashley to give us a closing prayer. Just before we pray, I'd like to say two things. One, if God's people faithfully follow his word, there will always be a clear distinction from the world. It cannot be otherwise. And the other one, for those who feel like they've wandered away from God, let this be our prayer. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. That's Psalms 51, 10. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we come before your throne of mercy. Your grace is ever sufficient, and we bow and we seek it at this time of need. You know every youth, every teenager out there somewhere, those who hear this voice, and you know each one of us with our struggles. Each of us have our flaws and our struggles and the things that beset us, the things that cloud our minds, the things that hold us back from following you and giving our lives fully. Lord, this journey, you said, is narrow and the people are few. Many a times we are drawn to the majority yet we forget that you have called us to your marvelous light. We ask, Lord, that you give us strength to walk and you give us strength to keep walking straight because we may walk and fall. That you hold us, you keep us from backsliding, keep us from falling, and that we will love you and that the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of your glory and grace. Be with us now and forevermore, for these are humble. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.